Welcome back, everyone. There's been so many people yelling at Marvel to bring Doctor Doom into the new Marvel movies, the new MCU. Turns out they already did it in Doctor Strange 2. We all didn't notice. Although if you were one of the people that felt like there were some Doctor Doom Easter eggs, turns out you were totally right. The director and the writer were talking about the Doctor Doom scene. It's also a cool Easter egg for the Fantastic Four just in general and for Kang the Conqueror, confirming a lot of our theories. Marvel also confirmed that they're going to do a big Marvel Phase 4, Marvel Phase 5 Comic-Con panel this summer in July, so they're going to reveal a whole bunch of big stuff. Chiefly among those, what's going to be happening with the next Secret Wars arc that they teased during Doctor Strange 2, and probably a lot more Fantastic Four and X-Men stuff too. Of course I'll do videos for all that stuff, so if you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the videos. We're also still doing the Thor Love and Thunder IMAX ticket giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is just be a subscriber and post all your Doctor Doom Fantastic Four theories in the comments below. All my Thor Love and Thunder post credit scene videos, easter egg videos for the entire movie review videos will start posting when the movie comes out. I'll post my review of the movie as soon as they let us do that. But according to Sam Raimi, the director and the writer of the movie, the really cool Doctor Doom scene happens when John Krasinski's Reed Richards of the 838 Universe Fantastic Four enters the room for the first time. And this is the clip of them talking about that, just doing commentary for the movie. So really cool reveal if you listen to the commentary. Lashana Lynch. Lashana Lynch was a pleasure to work with. Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. So is John. Hello, Stephen. Teleportation device he uses to get into the scene is something we took from the comics. That's Doctor Doom's uh, Doctor Doom's uh, time door, time platform. Stephen, but it's not the Scarlet Witch that we fear. And while it is not Professor X's first time on screen, it is the first time we see that uh, hover chair from the animated series. Reed Richards is my favorite Marvel Comics character, so it was a real honor to write his first entry, I guess, here in the MCU. So there's a lot to unpack in that John Krasinski Fantastic Four stuff that Sam Raimi and the writer are talking about, but the really important part is all the stuff about Doctor Doom. They're confirming that Reed Richards' portal technology is the same technology that the TVA is using, allowing him to travel across time and space, not just across space, confirming that it's based on their version of Doctor Doom's time travel platform, which is a huge comic book deep cut. That also confirms that he's using quantum energy to power it, which was a big theory of ours, like he'd be using quantum energy because the portal looked very similar to TBA portals, it's just that it's blue colored instead of orange colored. And we know all of Kang or He Who Remains time travel platforms, the TBA portals that they use, and Iron Man's time travel platform during Avengers Endgame is also powered by quantum energy. And if you didn't realize too, Iron Man's time travel platform is also based on the concept from Doctor Doom's time travel platform. It's just a very different looking kind of platform. The one in Doctor Strange 2 is more literally meant to be a copy of Doctor Doom's time travel platform because of the way it looks here. The reason why his portal would be blue in Doctor Strange 2 probably just because of the difference in the actual technology behind the portals themselves. The version that Kang uses in the distant future, the TVA technology, would be vastly, vastly more advanced. So this means in the 838 universe, John Krasinski's Reed Richards had already encountered a version of Doctor Doom. Makes sense. This is kind of like the wish fulfillment, most comic booky universe that we've ever been to inside the MCU multiverse. Like every big Easter egg from the comics mixed together in a bucket, put on the Illuminati together, which themselves are a huge Easter egg for the team in the comics. So this version of Reed Richards would have had a version of their comic book history together with Doctor Doom in school. Doctor Doom's origin story is also connected to the history of the Fantastic Four when they were attending school. They kind of did a version of that backstory during the classic Fantastic Four movies at Fox. You know you made a lot of folks at MIT feel like a junior high science fair, so you'll excuse me if I say for the moment. And this 838 Universe version of Reed Richards developed his portal technology based on Doctor Doom's time travel platform, meaning that their Doctor Doom had already figured out time travel and built a version of it. Like in the main MCU 616 universe, it's Iron Man who's the one to be the first to figure out time travel, building his time travel platform. You have to imagine in this universe it was Doctor Doom being the person to do that. And then this version of Reed Richards just improves on that design, basing his portal tech on it. Because the writer said that this version of the 838 universe Fantastic Four backstory and Doctor Doom took more from the comics, you have to imagine that this universe's Doctor Doom also created his time travel platform for similar comic book reasons. Like all the Illuminati stuff with them versus their version of Thanos and their version of Avengers Infinity War is all completely separate from the Doctor Doom stuff it sounds like. In the comics, the whole reason why Doctor Doom created his time travel platform is because he wanted to go back in time to try and find some magical artifacts called the Stones of Merlin. We know that Merlin is an actual real MCU character that existed, and that means that there's also probably an A38 universe version of the character too. Merlin, for example, is the one who forged the Black Knight's ebony blade that we learned about in the Eternals movie. He was a real character who lived in Camelot, Camelot was a real place, King Arthur, the Round Table, all that stuff was real in the history of the MCU. The Eternals talk about living amongst them when that was going on. 
Is that the ebony blade? Excalibur. Arthur always did have a crush on you. That's why Sprite asks Angelina Jolie's Thena character if she's using the ebony blade when she's swinging the sword around and she says, no, this is Excalibur. Like they literally have Excalibur on the domo, their ship, just sitting there. The funny thing about that, because we're talking about real stuff inside the MCU that actually existed, there's probably records about all that, the ebony blade, Excalibur, Camelot, King Arthur, Merlin, in Kamartage. Like Merlin was probably the Sorcerer Supreme of his era. The cool connection between Doctor Doom and Kang the Conqueror here is that originally in the comics, Kang the Conqueror developed his first time travel machine after stealing plans for Doctor Doom's old time travel platform and just enhancing them with his future tech. Kang's original name is Nathaniel Richards. He's actually the son of Reed Richards' father from a different family line. So he's related to Reed Richards, but very, very distantly. But in the future, he's a historian. He learns about Doctor Doom's time travel platform. So he just steals the plans for it because it's ancient. His first time travel mission was to go back to ancient Egypt and set himself up as Rama Tut, getting the people to worship him as a god instead of the actual Ennead pantheon of gods like Khonshu's pantheon. There were a couple of scenes in Easter eggs during Moon Knight where they referenced this. They talk about this thing called the Great Rift, the reason why those gods basically turned away from man and now they're just using avatars. Blame Kang for all the bad things that are happening right now, especially Secret Wars. There were also some Easter eggs for the Rama Tut Kang in He Who Remains Office during the Loki finale, just confirming the connection like, oh, in his backstory at some point, he actually did all this stuff. The cool connection back to the Eternals and the Celestials is that when Kang got bored with all this, he left his empire to Apocalypse. He became ruler. Apocalypse got all his advanced technology that you see him with in the comics from the Celestials after making a bargain with them. Celestials, I've come here to bargain. Basically helping them do the same thing that the Eternals do, just increasing the population to help hatch the new Celestial faster. We haven't seen Apocalypse in the MCU yet. Make all the Oscar Isaac jokes that you want because he played both Apocalypse and Moon Knight now in the MCU. But because in the 838 universe, we already know X-Men exist, that means a version of Apocalypse probably exists. And because they're a very comic booky X-Men the Animated Series inspired version of the X-Men, like he has that floaty chair, the version of Apocalypse in this universe also probably looks like the X-Men the Animated Series version of Apocalypse. Maybe he also sounds like Oscar Isaac. My big theory before they confirmed the Doctor Doom connection was that he who remains Kang had stolen his first time travel machine from Iron Man's belongings. Like in the distant future, he takes Iron Man's designs for his time travel platform from Avengers Endgame and starts with that before creating more advanced time travel machines and all the tech that the TVA wound up using eventually with their portals. But because they formed the Council of Kangs that he talks about, like he literally talks about them sharing technology across universes coming together in a council. That was all before the first Kang multiverse war. It's possible that they also shared plans for Doctor Doom's time travel machine instead of Iron Man's. Meaning that he who remains Kang, even if he didn't come from a universe where there was a Doctor Doom, might have gotten those plans for Doctor Doom's time travel platform instead of Iron Man's time travel platform. What'll probably happen though in the upcoming movies is that we'll see a new version of Doctor Doom on screen inside the new Fantastic Four movies or whatever sequels they wind up doing. Hopefully we'll also see a Silver Surfer and a Galactus Easter egg pretty soon too. And now because they seem like they're building up to a big Secret Wars arc, like we had the Infinity Saga of movies, now it seems like we have the Secret Wars Saga of movies. They're pulling more and more stuff from the multiverse, so it sounds like now the main place where we'll see X-Men, mutants, even Fantastic Four characters come is from the multiverse. I think mostly just because it's easier than explaining how they were around on Earth this whole time in the main 616 universe and we just never learned about them. But some of these characters probably will originate from the main 616 universe. It's just that it's much easier to use the multiverse to explain where they've been this whole time. And the big reminder on the upcoming Marvel Comic Con panel. So this is actually a big deal because they skipped Comic Con the last couple of years. It's been a while since we have like a really big Marvel Comic Con panel. They're basically doing the exact same thing at the end of July. And because this is Comic Con we're talking about is probably just for the really big movies. They have a special Disney Plus day happening in September for all the TV stuff that Marvel's doing. So the trailers that they're probably going to give us at this upcoming Comic Con is the Black Panther 2 trailer, like the official trailer, because that's literally the next movie that's coming out after Thor Love and Thunder. And we'll have already seen that movie when the Comic Con panel happens. We'll probably get a Guardians of the Galaxy teaser trailer, a Captain Marvel 2 trailer or teaser of some kind for the Marvel's movie, an Ant-Man 3 Quantum Mania trailer or some teaser of some kind. And they'll probably update the Marvel Phase 4 schedule with other movie announcements like these are the movies that we're doing and these are the dates that we're releasing them. Like the Blade movie, Deadpool 3, the Fantastic Four movie, the new X-Men movie that they're working on, probably some surprise announcements. Like they literally just announced that they're doing a Thunderbolts movie. And they'll probably confirm that we are now firmly in the Secret Wars arc of movies. Like this is the thing that we're building up towards. Secret Wars, Battle World. It'll be a little bit different from the comics, but it'll be pretty cool. 
I've already done a bunch of videos about this. I think that they're going to be using Kang to be the central figure in all this with the Kang multiverse war instead of God Emperor Doom. But a lot of it taking more inspiration from the more recent version of Secret Wars, not the classic 80s version of Secret Wars. So with all the incursions, I'm expecting them to lean more heavily on the Kang multiverse war than on, say, like the Beyonders. But they've already explained that there are a number of different ways for incursions to happen, like Doctor Strange and Spider-Man led to other incursions happening through their own actions. But everyone post all your theories in the comments below, and if there are any other Doctor Doom Easter eggs that you spotted in Doctor Strange 2 that I didn't talk about in the video, just write them below in the comments. Congratulations, Curtis Havengar. You're the giveaway winner from my last big Marvel video. Please email me on the about page of my channel so I can get your contact details. Everyone click here for my brand new Thor Love and Thunder Celestials trailer video, and click here for my full Miss Marvel Episode 3 video with Shang-Chi Easter eggs. Thank you so much for watching. Everyone stay safe, and I'll see you guys in the next one.